guys, it's Elena. Today I wanted to draw an opal with you in Procreate. This is something that has been requested a few times before, so I'm really excited to bring this to you, and I will be using my brand new iridescent brushes for Procreate in order to make this. So the link for those is down in the description, and that is a paid brush set. Um, however, you can try this out with any brushes that you have, and you're very welcome to join along. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start a canvas that is 20 by 16 inches at 300 dpi. And this first layer here is going to be our opal shape layer, so I'm just going to go ahead and rename that. So with white selected, if it's not selected, you can just double tap on your color wheel close to the white. I'm going to the default calligraphy brush set. So this comes with Procreate. Everyone should have this. And there's a brush in here called Monoline. So selecting that brush and turning off the background layer so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just drawing an oval on my canvas and then holding it until it pops into shape. So the, you can see that you can move it around or you can resize it as desired. So there we have our opal. And I'm just going to make sure that it's on the center of my canvas by going to the arrow, snapping, turning up my snapping, and then checking to uh, put it right in the center so that we have these um, yellow lines on both sides. There we go. Okay, now it's in the center. I'm going to fill it with white and I'm going to duplicate that shape. And the one on the bottom, I'm renaming that one, Shadow. So this will be the, the background shadow, sort of a drop shadow. So I'm selecting black and bringing that into the shape. And you can't see it because it's covered by the white, but there it is there, oops. There it is there. There we go, on the shadow layer. So adjustments, Gaussian blur, layer. And then our drop shadow starts to appear. I'm happy with it at about 23%. And now I'm going to tap the arrow and then tap over on the side just a little bit to move the shadow ever so slightly to the left so that it looks like the light source is over on the right side. And now I am going to my shadow layer, hitting the N and taking the opacity down to about halfway. Okay. So now over top of the oval shape, I'm adding a new layer and I'm naming it color background. And tapping that layer again, I'm selecting clipping mask. So now everything in this layer will be confined to this shape, this oval shape below. I have opened my iridescent light color palette and with this color palette and with the monoline brush that's already selected on this color background layer i'm just going to make some blobs over top of this circle and i'm going to close each blob all the way and then pull the color into it and you'll see in a moment why we're doing this
Okay, now that is done. I'm going to my adjustments, Gaussian blur layer again, and I'm sliding that most of the way up so that we just have a blur of color. So this will be the background so that whatever peeks through behind the colors that we're going to add now will also be multicolored. So over top of that, we're adding a new layer and making that into a clipping mask as well. And I will rename that iridescent because now we're going to go ahead and get the fun brushes out. So included in the iridescent brush pack are the AJ Iridescent and AJ Holographic. And they are the same brushes pretty much except that they are, um, you know, the holographic is, has a more, a uh, higher spectrum of color, including most of the colors in the rainbow, whereas the iridescent focuses mostly on one certain color. So for the opal, I'm just going to mostly be using the holographic brushes. So I'm just going to try out some different brushes and with these brushes, I'll make sure to put the name on the screen and I'll just start making a couple of blobs and then I'll fill in the cracks between them later. Okay, I've added some blobs with a couple of different brushes here. And these brushes are metallic, so when they are added on top of each other, they can get a bit white like that. So in order to add a bit more without having it blend in that way, I'm adding a second iridescent layer, also making that one a clipping mask as well. So in this new layer, I'm going to select my broken, no, my dazzling brush right here, still in the holographic folder. And I'm going to switch color palettes now to my iridescent intense. And I'm going to start making some lines around what I've done here. I'm using the pressure to make this brush get thicker and thinner depending on how much space I've got. I'm not closing all the gaps between different blobs. I'm just 
kind of checking to see what what I feel like would look best so it doesn't have to be clean lines this is just kind of adding some contrast and color to what we have got on the the page already And now I wanted to add some contrasting lines in a different brush. So I'm adding another layer so that we don't interfere with what's already there. Turning that into a clipping mask as well. Iridescent 3. So the other brush I wanted to try is called Prismatic. And I'm just going to keep that green color selected and add some more layers on top of this. And on this same layer, I'm just going to go down to my glitter brushes and selecting glitter flakes number three in that same green. I'm just adding a couple more glitter flakes. I'm not adding these on top since I'm on the same layer. I'm just adding a little bit on the side and this is just so that we have a couple of different style shapes in here we've got the we've got the um, really dense glittery line from the first brush we've got the prisms and I just wanted to add some flakes as well Okay, and as a final step, I wanted to make this look a little bit more 3D. It's a little bit flat now. So on top of everything, again as a clipping mask, I'm going to take black and I'm changing this new layer. This will be the top shadow. And I'm going to change the blend mode by tapping this N. I'm changing it to Vivid Light. So now I'm going to the airbrushing brushes, which are, again, default brushes in Procreate, and choosing the soft brush with the opacity way down to about 15. I'm just going to very gently start to add a little bit of shadow around the edges here.
and I don't really want to affect the colors too much. So I'm just going to this layer that I've just created, tapping that VI for vivid light and bringing the opacity down a bit so that this effect, I'm bringing it down about halfway. So this effect is very subtle and doesn't super affect those colors, but still gives it a slightly 3D look. You can see the difference here. So that was our opal. I hope that you enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as I have enjoyed making it. And I hope that you are able to go and make something similar for yourself now. And please consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time.